Hey everyone, how you doing? It's Jordan here, back again with another review, this time of Eglia. Now this game is currently only available in Japan, but it does have English, and it is coming to Western eShop sometime early next year, but I've been taking a look at it for the past few days, so let's jump in, see what it's all about. You guys know me. I'm as shallow as they come. You give me shiny thing, I like shiny thing. You give me anime babes, I like anime babes. You give me a game that looks like Legend of Mana, I like a game that looks like Legend of Mana. When I saw this pop up on the eShop a few days back, something else popped up too. It's a bit too much. Yeah, I thought, oh man, what an absolute gorgeous ripoff this is. That is until I found out that this game was basically made by the same people who did make Legend of Mana. Character designs from the same designer? Check. Background designs from the same artist? Check. Music from the same composer? Check. I was excited about this, even if it is just an enhanced port of a mobile game. But wait, don't switch off at hearing the dreaded M word because I think Eglia Rebirth is worth taking a look at. Stick with me. In terms of the premise, you are a goblin who's mysteriously lost their horns. While they are feared, they possess magical properties that other races do not. You're less dangerous now your horns have gone, and so some folk are willing to trust you, and trust you they must, as you hold the power to open magical eggs. No, not Cadbury's cream eggs, even though they are magical to me. Within these eggs contains part of the world trapped, and you must help Robin to free the world by tracking these eggs down and letting them free. While the overall plot is pretty unimportant, it's very light, don't go in expecting massive thrills or intrigue, but I tell you what, the writing is really excellent. It's light-hearted, and there is so much personality put into the script. The characters are endlessly likeable, they're all funny, it's a funny game. Which, you know, I'm not always a fan of humour in video games, especially in the stories, because, let's face it, video games are designed by programmers, not writers, so it doesn't always work for me. But Eglia absolutely nails it with its charm. Arm, sass, sarcasm and slapstick, it really does a fantastic job and I was well impressed with the banter between the characters. The fact that as a cute little goblin you can choose to tell people to get bent, I mean you've just got to admire that a little bit. It's actually got personality and unlike my jokes, it's not forced whatsoever. Cut to weirdly stretched joke that no one understands. You may remember in Legend of Mana, one of the most interesting and mysterious gimmicks surrounding it was the fact that you could place world locations by yourself. This actually changed small things within the game and wasn't explained much at all. Well, here, instead of artifacts, you get the previously mentioned magnificent cream eggs. I mean, golden, shiny eggs or whatever. Within the eggs are new areas of the world. You can place them on the map anywhere as long as it's adjacent to another landmass. And depending on where you place them, you may be able to let two areas react to create a secret area. There must be some sort of science to know in which combinations are good, but I have no idea. It seemed like guesswork to me. Once you're in these areas, well, that's where Eglia massively diverges from its Legend of Mana inspiration and well and truly makes it its own thing. The exploration is quite simple, which is not exactly surprising. It was made with phones in mind, so as much as it can work at times, you don't really want a highly complicated game. So here we have a dice roll style adventuring system. Very, very simple. Each stage you explore has an easy enough path to follow. Made up of hexagonal grids, you roll the dice and whichever number it lands on is how many places you can move if you want to. If you move next to an enemy or a chest or some material source, you can get a free chance to interact with it, either attack, open or whatever. Sadly, I'll get the weakest part of the game out of the way. While I don't mind the exploration and material gathering being on the roll of the dice and being very simple, I think attacking in this way is just a bit too simple. I would have preferred another method, perhaps entering into a battle arena of some kind or a minigame in order to liven things up. There is a lot of randomness to it due to the dice roll, like maybe you want to escape a fight but you keep getting ones, or vice versa. The higher the number you roll, the more powerful your attack is. While there's lots of RPG elements here such as stats, leveling up, the fighting is most certainly an afterthought and has too much of a mobile compromise feeling to it. But I guess it does keep the flow of the game up as battles don't tend to last very long, a couple of hits each and the enemy should be down unless you're very underleveled. 
Where there is some depth is in the spirits you can entice to join you. If you put food in some flowers, some spirits may join you and add special attacks or properties to you during your adventures. You can take three with you at a time and set them to either offense or support and they take up mana points. Wait, did someone say mana? I think Square Enix lawyers are getting a little bit twitchy now. You definitely need to take advantage of these as they can really help you out against elemental foes. Like a water spirit attack will really help you in your struggle against fire based enemies. There are plenty of environments to explore, even if they are small in scale, and you're going to be grinding these areas quite a bit in order to be getting on with the best part of the game, the town building. Wait, so you're telling me we've basically got Legend of Mana, but with town building. Now I didn't know it was possible to fall in love with a game, but I think it's time to uh, divorce the wife. Yes, back in your nameable hometown, I call my one town, you'll gather a motley crew of creatures, all of whom will settle in to live and work. Unlike the mobile game, you can actually walk around town instead of being a glorified menu system. This is a small touch, but it actually enhances the immersion. I did play the mobile version and it's perfectly fine, but this Switch version is just so much better. As you go on missions, getting new eggs and locations to explore, you'll soon find a healthy dose of characters to populate it. You can build relationships with them by taking on their requests, kind of like side quests. You can give them gifts and even let them join you on your missions, which they act as gatherers for materials. It is with these materials that you can go ahead and build, upgrade and decorate their homes or shops. You have full control of your home, but the populace will occasionally ask you to craft some furniture for their homes. There's actually quite a lot of systems here. There's tons going on and you'll have a lot of options. This is the greatest time sink for sure and you can definitely put a lot of time into it if you enjoy crafting and customization of town building. It is a grind, there's no doubt about that. You'll never really grab all the materials you'll need in one run and there are cooldown periods for certain things which work less well on the Switch than during a quick burst mobile game. I wish they could have been changed somewhat but at least those aspects don't get in the way of progress just stopping you from upgrading your spirits too quickly. The gameplay overall is simple in many aspects, but there is a lot of it, meaning it's actually quite a complex beast when looking at everything. If you enjoy material gathering with simple dungeon crawling and also building up a town, Eglia has fantastic gameplay within its scope. You can 100% tell it's a mobile game, you can tell that, but to be honest, I would go as far to say that this is one of the best mobile games ever. At the time of writing, this game is only available digitally on the Japanese eShop. I believe it's heading to Western eShops early next year, but I'm not entirely sure of the date. Not that it matters too much since if you want to play it right now, you can just download it from the Japanese eShop since that does have English. It's 2,200 yen, which is a bit awkward in terms of buying eShop credit, but if you're like me, you've probably got some gold coins on there to help out too. But that's about 15 pounds, 19 US dollars. No idea what the Western price will be. If you want to buy early and play it now, down in the description and pinned comment, I've put links as to where you can buy some Japanese eShop credit and support us at the same time by doing so. It's a fantastic price to be honest, worth every penny. There's no apparent physical release, but that may change in the future. Hopefully it does, because this definitely deserves to be a physical release. And if you're watching this in the future, then be sure to check out the pinned comment or description since I'll be sure to update the situation if anything comes up. Come on, Asia, give us the physical goods. I believe in you. I think it's worth it. Sure, it's a mobile game, but it's most certainly one of the higher produced games of its kind. Despite it being simple 3D for the most part, they've done a fantastic job of retaining that distinct hand-drawn style that Legend of Mana was famous for. Some parts of it look damn beautiful. The design is really almost perfect. Although I can't say I'm a big fan of characters with tiny faces and wide billowing trousers. I mean, this is heaven for MC Hammer. Likewise, the soundtrack is most certainly a step up from your standard mobile game. There's quality from Yoko Shimamura, as always, and she's done this with a lesser known composer called Yoshitaka Hirata, who's most famous for contributing to the Shadow Heart series. There's a couple of annoying tracks in here when it comes to some character themes, which I wish weren't there, but aside from that, it's a really good soundtrack. Overall, if you love Legend of Mana like myself, then you should 100% give Eglia a try. Sure, it's unashamedly trying to jump on the back of such a high profile release, but it really does feel like a spiritual successor rather than a copy. 
Yes, there are massive nods. This time you get a cute aloe vera plant instead of a cactus. It can be a bit too on the nose at times, but it vastly differs in its gameplay loop, and that's what really counts. It's just as gorgeous, it's just as nice on the ears, it has just as much charm, but it plays just a whole lot differently. Eglia is a lovely little game that will gel very well with those who love some town building along with some simple RPGing. The writing and characters are absolutely fantastic, I just wish the battling was a bit more interesting. If you're not convinced, you can get the trial version of the game on your phone. It's not one for one, there are some small but important differences, but you'll definitely get the idea of what's going on and I'm sure you'll enjoy it like me. An 8 out of 10. Alright, many thanks for watching. If you want to pick this up right now, be sure to use the links in the description for some Japanese eShop credit. Thanks to our executive producers, Dane Wilkinson, God of Resin, Boombox, Brett McLean, Jonathan Rumor, Santa Tartaruga, Alexander Kato, J Cross 7776, Elisa, Punky Dooster, Michael Del Polito, Cartoon Soren, Jack Serres, Robotech, Z, Raven Knight, Thorn, Metal Luna, Parsnip Coffee, Government Fat Cat, Isa, V, Mental Traveler, and Grand Search. Plus you. Yeah, you're watching right now. If you watched all the way through, leave me an egg emoji in the comments and I'll give you an egg back if there is an egg emoji. There must be. Eggs are magnificent. Boiled or fried, I'm satisfied. Although I'd prefer a Cadbury's cream egg. To be honest, check out some of our other stuff. Check out this game's inspiration. Check out our review of Legend of Mana. This game is digital only, but if you're into collecting physical Switch games, check out my weekly series every Monday. Or if you're waiting for a sale on this game, check out James's weekly bargains video where this may appear one day in the future. We'll see you guys over there. Have a good one.